Okay, so welcome everyone to our video today. Um, this video has come off the back of a story that we published a couple of weeks ago um, based on novel on bioscience and a recent grant that they've received to investigate a new potentially novel MS therapy. As we've said a lot recently on MS Translate, one of our key um, goals at the moment is to not only talk about the research from our point of view, but to get the people who are actually involved to give you direct insight into work that they're doing. So off the back of that, um, we got in contact with Nova on Bioscience, um, and luckily we've been joined by one of their members today, Dr. Travis Stiles. Travis, thanks for making the time to talk to us. Um, I guess we'll start just by, by you giving an introduction to yourself and, and telling us a little bit about um, Nova on Bioscience and how, how it came to be. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, so Novaron actually started from my dissertation work at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, we initially were characterizing a new kind of signaling complex that's involved in regenerative failure in spinal cord injury. Um, and as we, as I was getting closer to graduation and, and we were expanding on the technology, what we actually found is that the mechanism that we were uh, targeting was more ubiquitous for just regenerative failure in the central nervous system in general. Um, so we originally began focusing on spinal cord injury because it was a very simple system. If you sever a nerve, it does or doesn't grow back. Um, and we began uh, in 2013 uh, working on uh, the back of a National Institute of Health grant on spinal cord injury. Uh, and the story that you guys that you guys picked up is uh, actually uh, or another grant that we just received that extends that work into multiple sclerosis as we've seen that our, our technology has the ability to promote remyelination in a very similar fashion as it is able to promote nerve regrowth um, in a spinal cord injury model. Okay, so, so that grant that you received and obviously it's, it's early stages and, and we can't talk too much about it but can you give any sort of information as to to that project and what it's really looking into. Yeah, so the the big, the big problem in multiple sclerosis is you've got this autoimmune component, but then it, once that immune system becomes dysregulated and you attack the brain, what's left are these lesions, and the lesions are what's really responsible for the dysfunction and the long-term disability, and, and often you know it can lead to death, especially over time. Um, Every single drug that's on the market uh, currently it is trying to stop those lesions from forming by suppressing the immune system. But we have nothing on the back end that can actually repair damage after it happens. So what we have seen is, is as, we, as I mentioned earlier, that our ability to promote these regenerative processes. We, we enhance the body's natural ability to remyelinate and repair that damage after a lesion forms. Um, and what our preliminary studies have shown is that we validated that our therapeutic target is capable of, of enhancing that effect. So we've, de we've developed a drug to, to uh, capitalize on this and what this grant really is aiming to do is confirm in multiple systems, not just a single system, that we're capable of getting this re remyelinating effect. But really uh, what we hope to do is really characterize well our drug behavior so that we can define the best possible dosing protocol to maximize the effect. Um, you know, a lot of the, the, the big difference for us transitioning from an academic kind of environment to now trying to help actually create new drugs for patients is once you have a concept, you have to create the best possible product. And, and, and it gets a little bit more boring because you've already found the cool thing. Um, now we have to maximize the effect. Now we have to make sure that it works the best way possible and, 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 and has the least amount of negative side effects. So what this grant really allows us to do is not just keep finding cool things that might help patients, but really develop the best way to take that technology and directly a, a help patients in, a, a, in the maximal benefit, least amount of negative consequence you know, manner possible. Okay, fantastic. And I mean, as I said to you and, and said to everyone on MS Translate, I guess that I think this is now the new wave of hopefully where we're going with, with MS therapies is we're moving more into that remyelination and repair side of things rather than the immunosuppressive side of things that, as you say, we've, we've had for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. And I guess one thing that, that could be interesting to people is that we often hear about big pharmaceutical companies and the processes that they go through. Um, to get to this level. You guys obviously are in a slightly smaller sense as a, as a biotech company looking after these things as, as yourself. Um, can you talk a little bit about the difficulties um, being in that space and the sort of challenges that you face? Yeah, so you know the system the system's really changed in the last 
I would say, decade or so. You know, it used to be that big pharma would hand, would pick technologies out of universities and develop them in-house with these massive research groups. Um, but as we've seen, you know, companies get larger and larger, they're, they're, at the end of the day, how they're evaluated becomes different. I mean, you've got these very huge public companies with shareholders and, you know, huge boards and things like that. And I think what you can see from that is even though their capacity is huge and they're, what they're able to accomplish is amazing, they're, they become a little bit more risk averse. And so what, what has happened now is that instead of this big pharma university system where there's this direct linear translation from one to the other, you've started to see technology from a university spinning out into companies who are able to directly develop technology in that, in that commercial gap in order to facilitate large pharma to, to, to see less risk in taking that product so that they can do what they do best, which is the manufacturing, distribution, marketing, you know, direct patient hospital interactions, dealing with insurance companies. What they're not, what they've become less good at as a result of these big, massive infrastructures is they're not as good with the, with the, you know, the, the high risk type of, uh, of, of studies that like we're doing right now. It, you know, for example, you know, if one of it, it, just as a general example, without trying to single anybody out, if you were to go to somebody who, whose parent, whose mom had really advanced Alzheimer's, you're like, Hey, I have an, I have a way to cure your mom's Alzheimer's, but we have to stab her in the eye to do it. You know, I would say 90 percent of people would say, "Great, go for it." But large large pharmaceutical companies often have a hard time with that level of risk. They're they're averse to the commercial concept of, "Well, we're stabbing people in the eye." So the direct benefit of on patients becomes a little bit diluted in the larger scheme of regulatory FDA or whatever regulatory agencies you're dealing with in, in your individual uh, 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 country, uh, insurance payers, and things like that. So what we're able to do as a smaller group is, A, the, the technology was invented by us, so we're very intimately familiar with it, and B, we're not bound by those same kind of pragmatic business considerations. We can actually focus on what makes the best possible singular product for patients. And the, 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 the result of that in Big Pharma re, it has started to recognize that is we take on some of the risk up front. And allow them to kind of follow, and in many cases nowadays, they support a lot of our, the companies like us as a as a as an intermediate in the technology development, and and, and uh, be able to bridge that gap so that they can do what they do well, and we can do what we do well, and that in the end, I think makes the best possible picture for the patient. Does that make sense? Yeah, certainly. And uh, and I think one of the things that from when we talked the first time um, about this work is that. That you feel, and I guess the rest of the group feel very passionately about the work that you're doing, um, and the necessity to make sure that it's it's as good as it can be. Yeah, um, and that was something that really came across to me in terms of you know the work that you do. Um, I guess lastly, obviously we're we're going to be projecting this out to a large number of people with MS. Um, in the space that you're in at the moment, how can people with with MS and the larger community support the work that you guys are doing? You know, I, I think when you're talking about any new technology, the, the one of the biggest problems is always going to be funding. And it's always going to be uh, the profile of how people view what you're doing. When it comes to neurologic conditions, a lot of times people, the, 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 the growing sentiment of the, of the population that it affects has a big role in how uh, you know, policy advisors and research foundations and, and the people who fund the research that's fundamental to treating the disease view problems. I think one of the great things about what we're doing right now and, and what your group does in general is, uh, you know, letting, letting patients know what's being done and what can be done and why this is beneficial. I mean, remyelination is the critical factor left in, in, in improving the lives of MS patients. The drugs that we have for immune suppression are pretty good. They can get better. Curing the disease would obviously be great where immune, the immune system wasn't a problem anymore. But even with fewer attacks, patients are still having extreme disability. I think what MS patients, the most direct thing that they can do is become excited about these approaches that are the new up-and-coming phase. Just as you mentioned, you know, remyelination is this big thing. And, and and advocating and going to the, to the people that all, that are on a much higher level can lobby and advocate for the disease and saying these are the things we think are important. We this is what we want to see happen. Support this type of research. Support these types of groups. Support these types of types of companies. Um, and then on top of that, you know, we really value uh, patient interaction in terms of understanding what the individual experience of patients it, 
is uh, because you know it's like I said, it, it, you know, there's there's a risk aversion in certain things with larger companies, but they all, but what we now don't necessarily have the same access to is understanding the patient experience. So uh, we value interacting with patients and understanding, um, you know, what what is it that about we're doing that you like, but what do you see as potentially problematic? Because we we don't always necessarily think that way because we're not absolute we're not personally affected by it. Um, but other, you know, the, the, other than that, I mean, I think, I think the best thing about the, the MS population is that they are highly motivated and they're active and they're involved. Um, and I think that is, you know, supporting work, not just, not just ours, but work like ours and, and, and beginning and continuing to build on, uh, the, the growing sentiment that this is a valuable area of research. I think, I think that's an important part of, of getting to the, to a point where, you know, we can accurately treat and, you know, adequately treat these conditions. Well, I think I mean this is the first step, I guess, in terms of getting out there into the into that community, and I think people will be really appreciative um, of the time um, that you guys have taken to to talk directly to them about the work you're doing. Um, we've obviously had some chats that this is hopefully going to be an ongoing um, sort of collaboration where we will provide updates um, throughout the whole process in terms of what's happening for people who are watching. Um, obviously, if you do have any comments and feedback that you want to provide, you can either. Um, find another one online and provide it. We'll put the details um, video here, um, or obviously you can just comment below. Um, again, thank you, Travis. We will be talking again soon, I'm sure. Um, if there's any last comments that you'd like to make um, for people, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate taking the time to to listen. You know, if you're if you're still watching this far in the video, you know, good job, you made it. Um, you, you know, we're we're really we're really passionate about what we do. Uh, our our kind of mantra as a company is we want to tackle hard problems and we want to do it in the way that will benefit everybody the, it, it, to the maximum efficiency in the long run. And what we think we have as a, 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 the luxury of doing is we see a difficult journey and potentially complicated business cases as not being worth the potential cost of sacrificing the harder, more complex work up front to make what we talk like what we talked about the best product possible, um, so I think I think one of the things I would like to leave as a final thought is, you know, I, I, one I, we get sometimes people get they they come to us and they say, well, when's your clinical trial? And I think one of the things I would like to to, to maybe put out there is that one we when we get to clinical trial, it's going to be because we put in a tremendous amount of work. To make sure that the th what we go take into the clinical trial has the best possible chance of success, and that can be a process. Um, you know, we're, we're so we're a few we're a few years away from that. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't want to talk about it. That doesn't mean we don't want to start engaging people now and and, and understanding, uh, like we mentioned before, patient experiences, so that we can think about those things now because we always need to be thinking ahead. Um, but you know, I think I, I think that like the MS community. Uh, we're committed to the patient experience and we're committed to patient-based outcomes. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we would love to, uh, we're excited to continue having conversations with you guys and keep putting our name out there because uh, we think we have an opportunity to do something cool in this field. And we, we you know, we, we want as many people to be along for the ride with us as possible. Well, I mean, it goes without saying that we're very excited about the work that you're doing. I think the community is going to be very excited about um, the work that you're doing and, and really excited to continue to share this process with you guys. Um, so thank you again for your time, um, much appreciated and we'll, we'll talk again soon. Thank you very much.